So hello guys, here we have question number 4 from challenger understanding exercise of the chapter electrostatics from pathfinder. So uh, it's a tough question so give, please give it a try before looking at the solution. So uh, first uh, let's look at the question. Three long frictionless rods are fixed parallel to each other in a horizontal plane with separation D between adjacent rods. The rods were identical sleeves A, B, C and D each of mass M and charge Q. Initially, the sleeves B, C and D are arranged in a line perpendicular to the rods and the sleeve A is far away from them as shown in the figure. In this way, the sleeves B, C and D are in a state of unstable equilibrium and have no electrostatic interaction with the sleeve A. If the sleeve A is launched towards the right with the initial velocity U, find velocities of all the sleeves when they acquire steady state motion uh, and consider all the cases. So if you want to give it a try, uh, you should do it now. So yeah, if you want the hint, here it is. B, C, D are in unstable equilibrium. So uh, even when A is very far away, they will separate very easily. So if you want to try again with this hint and uh, focus on this idea that when A is very far away, they will just separate. So you can uh, give it a try once again. So now, yeah. So yeah, now let's look at the solution. So uh, first of all, let's try to observe what is happening over here. So as I said in the end, the particles B, C and D are in unstable equilibrium and even when the particle A is far away, it will exert slightly larger force on particle C as you can see as this distance is slightly smaller than this distance and uh, 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 force on C than B and D which shall be enough to break this equilibrium. So how will this break? The particle C will move forward and uh, due to the repulsion between B, uh, B C and uh, C, D respectively, the particles B and D will move in this directions. Right. So now uh, before moving ahead, uh, let's try to find the possible steady states qualitatively. For this, clearly we can see that as the particles B and D are equivalent, they will uh, remain symmetric and will move together. So basically their X coordinate or the horizontal coordinate will remain the same. And if the velocity of A initially is very large, it should shall be able to pass the potential barrier uh, created due to B and D, which won't be possible for a very low speeds. So what I'm saying here is that as the uh, uh, during this separation, uh, particle A, the interaction due to particle A will be very s less. So the particle B and C will, uh, after some time, will be moving in this direction, and A shall be moving in this direction. So now, uh, if the particle uh, velocity of particle A is very small, it won't be able to pass through uh, this gap, and if it is very large, it uh, it will be able to pass through that. So that's what written here, and after that. So there can be three possible cases for steady state uh, which can be given by direct observation although some might not be uh, restricted due to the values given in the question. So uh, we, there we can get three steady states and all are not all might not be possible in the final answer we have to check. So for, for easy, uh, obviously for very small u the particle A will not be able to uh, pass the barrier potential barrier of uh, B and D and particle C will be moving ahead and this uh, white lines in between are showing infinite separation or very uh, very far away when they are very far away and similarly when uh, u is very large uh, A will pass through B and D but won't be able to pass C, uh, through C because uh, at very small distance the repulsion will become very small so it can pass through. So uh, this will be when uh, U is very large and for some intermediate U if it is possible it, it can be possible that A, B, A might be trapped between B and D in an unstable equilibrium and uh, they can be moving together. So we will have to check uh, whether these three cases are possible or not and what are the values of velocities finally. So now uh, as we have a basic idea of what we have to pursue uh, and uh, what uh, will be what will be the steady state finally now let's go back to the how the process will happen. So now as I said earlier even when A is very far away the equilibrium of B C D has broken and still uh, their interaction with A is very weak in comparison to the interaction with themselves. So basically what I'm saying here is that when even when A is very far away B C and D will break apart and uh, B C uh, B and D will move in this direction, C will move in this direction and they will move apart independently without any effect due to A. So we can uh, neglect the effect due to A during the separation of B, C and D to, uh, to, uh, to a very good approximation. So that's what I've said here. So initially they will separate as if no A will were present and to a very good approximation they will uh, also separate to a very large distance before the interaction uh, with A needs to be considered. So uh, I've called this interaction A. 
interaction of the particles uh, interaction due to b c and d in themselves i have called this interaction 1 and uh, the uh, pa- velocity of particle will be unchanged and this will still be moving with a velocity u in the forward direction b and d will have acquired some velocity in the backward direction and c would have acquired some velocity in the forward direction due to their uh, repulsion force and they will have separated to an uh, i have assumed they have separated to an infinite distance so now uh, and after this we will have to consider an interaction between these three particles uh, because as they grow closer their uh, repulsion will start to increase so after interaction 2 uh, something like uh, some some of the three cases we might get so but uh, let's first of all let's consider what will happen uh, in interaction a and after this a third interaction might also occur de- depending upon the velocity so after the second interaction so but first let's uh, try to describe in- interaction 1 quantitatively and so first of all uh, just after interaction 1 let's let's assume that velocity of b and d is v2 in leftward direction and the velocity of c is v1 in rightward direction so by conserving momentum and energy over here what we can get is 2mv2 equals to mv1 the, these are the, mv1 is the momentum of a particle c in the right direction and uh, 2mv2 are the momenta of particles b and d in the left direction so they must be equal and similarly by energy conservation the change in potential energy must equal uh, to the uh, g- gain in kinetic energy of the system so 2 times half mv2 squared plus half of mv1 squared equals to 2 times kq square over d and on solving these two equations you can get these values of v1 and v2 these uh, these uh, for, uh, after this we will uh, calculate the val- uh, all the values in terms of v2 so yeah this is the value of v2 so now after this particles a and b d will interact so uh, so now here i am ta- talking about the interaction second interaction which will happen between particles a and uh, a and bd so now uh, when these particles interact as i said earlier three cases can be possible so let's try to find if it's possible whether the intermediate case where the particle a gets in stuck between b and d and they three move together as a whole if uh, and if it's true at lower velocities particle a won't co- cross bd and at higher velocities it it shall cross so basically we are trying to find the critical velocity at which the uh, particle a gets stuck between b and d so now let's consider this situation directly to find uh, that velocity let's say that they move uh, after a gets stuck in bd they move with velocity v3 and uh, the velocity of c remains unchanged to v1 so we can neglect c for uh, velocity of c and interaction with c for this process so this is the, uh, the picture uh, this is the image just after second interaction so again by mo- momentum and energy conservation the final momentum which is 3 times m times v3 because all three are moving with the same velocity should be equals to the initial momentum which will be mu minus 2 mv2 which can be considered from the initial diagram and uh, the energy uh, will be 3 times half mv3 squared minus the initial energy equals to half mv half mu square plus twice of half mv2 square should be equals to the change in potential energy which is minus 2 kq square over d so now on solving this you can easily get the value of u to be minus v2 plus root of 6 kq square by md and the value of v3 to be v minus v2 plus uh, root of 2 kq square by 3 md square and uh, what we can observe from here is that uh, this value and this value can be written in terms of v2 which we found here uh, which is root of 2 kq square over 3 md so uh, this must be uh, on on substituting the values this must be 3 v2 so the velocity of u required for this critical velocity should be twice of v2 and v2 is a constant uh, mind that so um, we found the uh, definite velocity of u for which it gets stuck in bit in the in the particles and the velocity v3 we get is zero so basically what this is saying here is that after getting stuck uh, the parti- the three particles uh, stop right away here so the velocity of v3 is zero so bad has uh, come to a static equilibrium here and c is moving forward so this is basically a, we have reached a steady state because this distance between uh, the uh, two part uh, two two groups of charges isn't changing so uh, this should be a steady state so that's what i have written uh, next so now as we get v3 to v0 so we can conclude from here that the three sleeves a b and d come to rest and c is moving away from the s- them so this must be the final state and the third interaction in this case won't be required so we showed that this situation is indeed possible so now let's uh, so now as we found the critical velocity now let's consider the two cases in which uh, the velocity of u is less than the critical velocity and the uh, when the velocity of u is greater than critical velocity 
So let's consider the first case in which u is less than 2v2, which is the critical velocity we just found. So here, uh, as it is less, the particle A won't be able to pass through particle B and D. Uh, so here I've assumed this diagram, which is just after the second interaction. And uh, the uh, interaction of C does not need not be considered in this process. And I've assumed the velocity of B and D uh, is V4 in the right direction and that of A is V5 in the uh, right direction. So again, he can uh, we can do here um, by momentum and energy conservation, but uh, if you observe that closely that this situation is exactly like an elastic collision as there is no energy lost and we can use coefficient of restitution to be one. Uh, actually, this is also derived by the same energy conservation stuff. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if you do by either method, but uh, I prefer doing it, uh, it by a coefficient of restitution because it is much smaller in, uh, by this way. So uh, first of all, by the first equation we get by momentum conservation again, which is mv5 plus 2m times v4 should be equals to mu minus 2mv2. This is the initial momentum and this is the final momentum. And the coefficient of restitution, E, should be equal to the velocity of separation over velocity of approach of the two bodies. And the velocity of separation is V4 minus V5, because V4 needs to be V5 uh, after the collision. And uh, initial velocity of approach is U plus V2. So now on solving these two equations, you can easily get the value of V4 to be 2U minus V2 by 3, and V5 to be minus of U plus 4 V2 by 3. So uh, we get, uh, we have gotten these values of V4, uh, V4 and V5. And what we can observe from here is that this is the velocity V4 and the velocity V4 is less than 2V2 because of this condition here, because of this condition here where U is less than twice of V2. So th as this is less than twice of V2, so uh, this particle B and D are moving forward in such a, with such a velocity that this velocity is less than uh, V1 as V1 is twice of V2. So this separation again keeps on increasing. So this must again be a steady state. So here again, uh, so that's what I've written here. So now as V4 is less than 2V2, we don't need to con consider another interaction with particle A as I just said, the, uh, the distance uh, keeps on increasing till infinity, whose velocity is 2V2 and separation will only, in only increase. So this must be a final state. So this is, this, uh, this is, these are the velocities for case one, a uh, case one in which the uh, velocity is pretty small in comparison to the critical velocity. Now let's consider the case when uh, the velocity of the particle, initial particle, is uh, greater than the critical velocity. So in this case, the particle A will pass through B and D and the diagram will be something like this just after the second interaction. So now again, here again, we can use the concept of coefficient of restitution as it is uh, just an elastic collision. Although such a situation won't be able to uh, be seen in normal body because uh, as they can pass through this, but it will have the same logic. So basically what I'm saying here is that here no energy is being lost and particle A is uh, passing through particle B and D, but this won't occur in normal collisions, which we see normally, but uh, the logic will be the same as there is no energy loss. So again, uh, by momentum conservation, first of all, we get that mv square, mv7 plus 2mv6 equals to mu minus 2mv2. And the coefficient of restitution is 1, which is uh, velocity of separation over velocity of approach, which is v7 minus v6 over u plus v2. So from here, uh, on solving, we get the value of v6 to be minus v2 and v7 to v u. So as if it's as if the particles have uh, moved uh, un, uh, undeflected or have, no, have, uh, have gone through a no change of velocities. So uh, after this, the particle A will be moving with a velocity u in this direction. And what we can observe from here is that u is actually greater than uh, twice of v2 as uh, uh, due to this condition because it is greater than critical velocity. And v1 is nothing but twice of v2. So uh, indirectly, this di distance is uh, keeps on increasing. So we will have to consider interaction between A and C finally. So there will be another interaction between particle A and C. But and uh, B and D will have to be neglected because they are moving in this direction with a velocity of uh, uh, which we found here which to be minus of v2. So that's what I've written here. So as the particles pass through with no change in velocities and here we will have to consider another interaction between A and C as U is greater than twice of V2. That's what I've said. So now let's call the third, uh, it the third interaction. So just after the third interaction, what we can write is, so here I've assumed, uh, so uh, just after the third, and what I've said is, here I've directly written the values of final velocities as we might recall the reco result of elastic collision of two bodies of equal masses. So they will just exchange velocities. 
so basically a and b have same mass and uh, uh, they are undergoing kind of an elastic collision as there is no energy loss and finally they are reaching a steady state so they will just exchange velocities and as i found v7 to be u so this particle c will gain a velocity of u in the right direction and this particle a will gain a velocity of v1 in again in the same direction so the final velocity of c will be u and that of a will be v1 so these are all the cases that will be uh, possible in the question and, uh, and they have been compiled below so these are the final answer you can uh, take the screenshots and look at over the whole problem again because it's a long problem and it uh, it might be difficult to understand in some phases so uh, these are the velocities when uh, of when va is less when u is less than the critical velocity which is twice of v2 it should be equals to minus u plus uh, minus of u plus 4 v2 by 3 when u equals to critical velocity its velocity will be zero and when u is greater than critical velocity its velocity final velocity will be 2v2 in the steady state similarly uh, that for uh, v b or v v d as they are both similar they will be equal so when u is less than the critical velocity its velocity will be 2u minus v2 by 3 when u equals to uh, the critical velocity it will be zero and when u is greater than critical velocity it will be minus of v2 here uh, mind that here minus sign uh, shows the direction which is in the negative uh, x-axis and similarly vc can be found to be uh, 2v2 uh, in when 2v2 when uh, the velocity is less than or equal to the critical velocity and when it is greater than the critical velocity it will be equals to u where v2 equals to root of 2 kq square by 3md in the final answer they have uh, put the value of k to be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught but here i haven't written it because it will just uh, uh, mess up the thing so yeah that's the final answer hope you all like the video uh, please go through the whole question slowly slowly because it's a pretty long question and uh, might be difficult to understand in uh, pit, uh, a lot of phases so yeah hope you all like the video uh, please like share and subscribe thank you